ลุยกันที่ความมันคู่แรกดีกว่านะฮะชกกันแบบคาดเชือกหลายๆคนไม่เคยเห็นกับตาครับฉะนั้นชาวนครสวรรค์มาดูให้เต็มตาคู่แรกพบกันที่พิกัดน้ําหนัก67กิโลกรัมครับคนแรกเป็นยอดมวยจากอิตาลีมาด้วยความมุ่งมั่นครับมั่นใจจะเป็นยังไงขอเสียงต้อนรับเดอะสมาร์ทไกด์ซามูเอลชอสแคนโอซามูเอลชอสแคนโอเดอะสมาร์ทไกด์ประเทศอิตาลีนักมวยอิตาเลียนของเราขึ้นสนามแล้วนะครับทักทายเขาว่าเช่าได้นะครับเป็นการทักทายภาษาอิตาเลียนนะครับเช่าสวัสดีครับขอบคุณมากๆนะฮะน่ารักมากๆเลยนะครับผมขอเปิดการแข่งขันชกมวยวันนี้ด้วยเจ้าถิ่นโอ้โหโอ้โหเปิดด้วยเจ้าถิ่นกันเลยวันนี้นะครับนักมวยไทยของเรานี่นะฮะคือลูกหลานชาวนครสวรรค์นะครับส่งเสียงการต้อนรับเขาด้วยนะครับนี่คือคุณศึกบรรพพิสัยกองไกรซอเจอเปียกูเทยกองไกรเราสามารถเห็นนักแข่งแรกที่เข้ามาในรายการไทยฟุตบอลในวันนี้ที่นั่นซามูเอลทอสกาโน่จากอิตาลีก็ชื่อว่าเด็กที่ดีที่สุด33 year old from Guisano in Italy. I hope I pronounced that right to anyone listening from Guisano. 178 centimeters tall with a professional record of 37 fights, 23 victories, 14 losses, and no draws. Did fight back in April against Samming Det here on Thai Fight. Did pretty well in that fight, however, did lose to Samming Det. And now introducing the hometown boy, fighting in the black corner, of course. Gong Gai Saw Job Biek Utai. His real name is Man Kong Sip. He's 25 years of age, 179 centimeters tall, from right here in the Khon Sawan province. He's had a total of 130, 139 fights, 99 victories, 35 losses, and 5 draws. 
Nakhon Sawan province, otherwise known as Pak Nampo City, is an ancient city with a long history. It is situa situated centrally here in Thailand and is the origin of the Chao Phraya River. There are many beautiful places to visit here in Nakhon Sawan, many temples, ancient sites, and of course, some delicious local foods to sample. Nakhon Sawan, of course, uh, translated to English, the heavenly city. And I think it's fair to say they got it right. Very happy to be here, of course. And of course, Gong Rai, he's going to be very happy to fight in his own home province. But pressure, though. Absolutely. A lot of pressure against the veteran Toscano. Of course, uh, Gong Rai. Samuel Toscano actually translates to ruining the party. <laughs> <laughs> Thai Fight organized this event with strict COVID-19 procedures in place. All fighters and indeed staff were tested for COVID-19 before entering the grounds of the stadium by medical personnel. And here we go, start of the first round of our first fight of the evening. Taifan Nakhon Sawan. There you see already giving a big push kick there, the fighter in the black corner, Gongkai. As I was going to say, Gongkai, he came here with a lot of family members, as he should, being his hometown. Been training oh. out of um, Sojong Big Otai Gym, which is not too far in um, Utai Tani province. Solid overhand rights there coming in. Oh, but a, an elbow attempt, and then he got caught with the left one, Toscano, and a spinning back elbow coming in. Wobbled early on there, Gongkai. Yeah, problems for Gongkai. He's got to just stay alert here, try and weather this storm. We absolutely did not think that was going to happen at all. I mean, Gongkai, the first fight he fought here in Thai fight was against um, Nong Oh, who's fighting in the, in, the, in the fight after this. And he took many heavy shots from Nong Oh until eventually being knocked out, of course, in the second round. He did. Beautiful push kick once again from the hometown boy, Gongkai. And Samuel Toscano still coming forward. Showing that he deserves to be respected here in the Thai fight ring. Yeah, Konkrai did look maybe overconfident starting this fight. And Toscano, well, he just showed what he could do. Absolutely, but maybe that's just pressure, of course. Yep. Being in front of your family and friends here in your home province. I should probably also mention that this is a Ka Chuk fight, so it's not easy to defend yourself using only rolled hands. The takedown there from Konkrai. Not at all, of course, the Ka Chuk dating back all the way to the Ayutthaya Kingdom. Documented by Simon de la Lube. And here we are keeping the tradition alive. Good solid knees there from both fighters. Both now wary, both now aware of what their opponent can do. That high kick there. Yes. Spin again from Toscano. He loves to spin. It's fair to say that we've seen Gonkai. Well, let's put it this way his legs were. Turn it to spaghetti, let's put it that way. <laughs> was the opponent, oh. he definitely felt Gongai's power early on as well. Samuel Toscano, but still swinging for the fences. Good knee there from Gongai, as they both get tied up into the ropes. Back to the center of the ring they go. Oh, Fair Toscano to skipping a jump, but I'm just waiting for him to spin again. Fair to, fair to say, throughout this entire... Oh, I'm not sure what he's trying. Oh, throughout <laughs> most of this round, it's been Toscano who's been the aggressor. I mean, ever since uh, Gonkai felt that power that he can uh, he can really give to his opponents. Yeah, I really thought uh, after that initial shot that Toscano threw that he was going to continue with those types of shots, but he's... I don't know, it's been a little bit lackluster. Starting to spin as well, like jumping nothingness. Improvising, I think, is the best way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Good knee there from Toscano. End of round one. Interesting. Stay with us here for Thai Fight. Knock on to one. Well, that was that left hand. Caught. Kong Krai. Flush. Then after that, Toscano sort of backed off. Kong Krai was the one who was pushing. And pr interesting to say though because er early on it seemed like Samuel Toscano wanted Gronkai's respect he got it but then later on sort of just hung back a little mm. bit and started doing a lot of spinning techniques with um, no, no avail left high kick there from Gronkai and there's that left hand coming in again from Toscano on again beautiful nice shots there from Samuel yeah look he's looking to spin again yeah good combinations that left hook followed by a low leg kick was really well timed that's the sort of techniques you want to see more of. Yeah, it's the unorthodox technique. I mean, it's fair to say that Gongkai has a lot more experience than Toscano has, so maybe he has to use the surprise element to beat Gongkai here tonight. Yeah, just connected with a flush knee there, did Gongkai, and saw a grimace on the face of Toscano. Another nice 
high kick there from Gonkai, but receives an elbow. Samuel now trying to push forward and we receive an elbow for his um, efforts and trying to go for another spinning technique. Left hand, left uppercut there from Toscano. It's hot here, it's got to be said. Must be tiring. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Don't think there's any wind in sight at all. Good body shot there from Toscano. But just early on there, a beautiful lock there from Gongkai. Of course, clinching being a very important part of Muay Thai. Gongkai can do that just fine. Nice, solid right uppercut there from Toscano. Gongkai not having his own way here in this second round. I think it's fair to say though that Gongkai is much well versed in, in, in the clinch. Maybe that's something Toscano should try to avoid. Of course, easier said than done. Nice right hand there thrown from Toscano, but a beautiful left from Gongkai. Toscano doing very well though, trying to count, counter back. There is a cut somewhere. I can see some blood on the side of the head on to of Toscano. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Oh, uppercut there from Toscano. There's that uppercut again. Spending a lot of times on the rope now, Toscano, but looks quite comfortable there. He's okay just for Gongkai to continuously attack him and try to counter any sort of offense Gongkai has thrown. Gongkai still being the aggressor, still being the one pushing forward. But of course, here in Maximo, oh, sorry, here in uh, Thai Fight, they prefer the forward movement. As a ghost of the past to suddenly appear there, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Toscano is very unorthodox. I think that's frustrating, Conkrite. Look at that. I mean, where does that come from? Good body kick there from Conkrite. He needs, he needs to put out more shots. End of round two. Well. Another round in the books there for both Conkrai and Toscano. Difficult to separate the two. Conkrai was the one who was throwing the better technique, so I'm assuming the judges are going to give it to him. But Toscano, oh, it's his ear that's bleeding, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. The left ear. Of course, the yeah. can uh, cause a lot of damage. I think most of the damage was inflicted by Conkrai, so you've got to look to that. Absolutely. Third and final round. And just as you said, the more crisp techniques are coming from Gonkai, just like that kick that he's just thrown just now onto Samuel, oh. another one. Beautiful right high kick thrown there from Gonkai. But hands coming in from Toscano and... Maybe a finger in the eye ah, there. Ah, I'll see, yeah. Of course, things like this can happen, especially in a Kachuk bout. Oh, another right high kick there from Gonkai. Toscano kind of getting to the clinch just hasn't worked for him all match. I'm not sure why he keeps trying to go back to it. And the, spin, the spinning techniques, I'm not sure how many has actually connected. Guy, of course, doing very good defensively. Shutting down any sort of offense coming in from Toscano and countering beautifully, just like that right kick that connected very well. I think in terms of success rate, it's that left hook that's been doing well for Toscano. But he seems to abandon that and seems to, like you said, Go for those spinning techniques. I'm, I'm seeing a pattern. Oh, beautiful running downward elbow. Seems to connect. Seeing a pattern though from uh, Toscano's offense. He starts off with swinging for the fences and afterwards tries to go for them sp <laughs> spinning techniques. Back into the clinch he goes once again. And Toscano this round being the aggressor, doing a very good job with that as well. Nice knees there, thrown from the Italian. Right high kick there from Conkrai. He's been looking for that, what, four or five times now throughout this fight, but it's been blocked by Toscano. However, it will score with the judges, of course, beautiful technique. I mean, you know what they say with techniques, <laughs> if they work, keep doing it, yes. but I haven't seen it work once. But then again, we talked earlier about the element of surprise and how effective it can be. The swinging hooks there again from Toscano coming in. But perhaps it's not a surprise for Conkrai anymore at this point of the fight. You gotta love the determination from Ta Samuel Toscano still pushing forward. That's the sort of aggressive progression you want to see here at Thai Fight. Conkrai happy to back off now. Thinks the, the job's done already. 
fight. You can't be too confident with that. It's a three round fight. And every round here on Thai Fight is scored. So Gongkai really has to be careful. Trying to go for a spinning technique of his own though, Gongkai. He's learning from Toscano, the master, <laughs> yeah, it seems. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. End of the third and final round. We will go to the judges for a decision. Stay with us for that decision and for the rest of the amazing card here at Thai Fight. <laughs> ยกแรกนี่มีใจหายใจคว่ำกันนะครับครับผมว่าจะฝ่ายขาวนี่หมัดคุ้นเนี่ยวงออกเข้ามามองไม่เห็นเนี่ยออกมาเยอะมากนะ
second fight of the evening. And there you can see the brave Adriano Silva de Oliveira from Brazil, 178 centimeters tall with a professional record of 57 fights with 36 victories, 20 losses and one draw. That nickname never been so apt as he is a latecomer. And not only that, he's not a replacement for anyone, he's a replacement for the beast, the Hulk. Of course, there's his opponent in the black corner. Goes by the name of Nong Oh Shaw Ha Payak. His real name is Mr. Adison Jit Kam Kun. 21 years of age, 74 centimeters tall from Payao province in northern Thailand. With a total of 231 fights, 181 victories, 40 losses, and 10 draws. Of course, Nong Oh, he's nicknamed the warlord of Payao. The warlord from Payao, the Payao warlord. There we go. <laughs> Got there in the end. Uh, translating it from uh, tight English. Second bout of the evening in the white corner from Brazil, Adriano Oliveira. The black corner, Nong O, Shaw Ha Payak. Of course, Nong O undefeated since he's been here at the Thai fight promotion. I think he's won three or three by knockout. Yes. No, the, we know, don't we, that the boss of Thai Fight is big on Nong Oh. Thinks this has potential superstar in the making qualities. Oh, absolutely. Perhaps the second coming of Ten Nung, he says. And he's been fighting out here, fair to say. Beautiful, hard, powerful kick there from Nong Oh. You've got to say, a lot of fighters, when they come into Thai Fight, they take quite some time to adjust to they the do. Thai Fight format. Yes. I don't think Nong Oh had any problems with that whatsoever. No, his style suits Thai Fight down to the ground, and he has, well, he possesses two sledgehammers as fists. Oh, absolutely, and he's continually walking forward, trying to bully Adrian Oliveira, but Adrian Oliveira making his nickname count, the Brave. The only thing about Nongo that you would say is that he is quite easy to hit, and we have seen him go down here at Thai Fight once before by a flying knee, but he gets back up, he wasn't brings out counted. those sledgehammers, and then it's just all over. The power of the boy is ridiculous but it's got to be said Oliveira is doing well right now but here comes Nongo it seems like the more Oliveira gets here hit here comes Nongo the more Oliveira gets hit the more he wants to attack absolutely incredible there from Adriano Oliveira but Nongo he's the same it's that right hand of course he saw it from his fight against Gonkai earlier in Thai fight Lampang once he got hit he wants to hit back even harder and that's exactly what he's doing against oh, there it is. There's Adriano that Oliveira again. Bambi legs, Nongo going in for the kill. That might be all she wrote. Adriano staring up to the heavens. What a solid hand there from Nongo. And that's all she wrote. The Warlord does it again here at Thai Fight. Nongo to Hapayak with another victim. Four fights, four victories, four of them by KO. Absolutely amazing. Just one more step to start him. As Michael Chavello once said, this boy has muscles on top of muscles. <laughs> Let's take a look at the handiwork. Too late. <laughs> but this is what he does. We have seen him. First round, takes a time to get adjusted. Then he brings out those right hands and people just can't cope. It's initially a hook, I believe, that caused Adriano Oliveira to wobble. And of course, it's a hook once again that finishes it. It's not always technically pristine. It's not always beautiful, but my goodness, does it work. Hook to the temple there. The equilibrium breaker. He did well to stay on his feet that time. Absolutely, but, but there you go. You stay on your feet. Another attack's gonna come, and here we see the last hook that did it. Bam! Just around the ear, and that will affect your balance. Stay with us, folks. More to come here at Thai Fight. Next on the agenda is the female bout.
พยายามต่างตามปตทปตทนี่ก็น็อกมาแต่ว่าเราดูต่อไปกันถึงเวลาประกาศผลกันหน่อยนะครับผมและผู้ชนะของเรา The w i n n e r s น้องโอชาฮาพยาเรียบร้อยนะฮะน้องเอาสี่ครั้งติดครับผมสำหรับชัยชนะของน้องโอนะครับจริงๆสุดยอดเลยนะครับติดตามเรื่อยๆนะฮะกับ <Sanly> ลุยกันดีกว่านะครับหมวยคนแรกนะครับเป็นยอดหมวยหญิงจากสหรัฐอเมริกาเขาบอกว่ามีความไวในการออกอาวุธมากสยบคู่ต่อสู้ไวนะฮะจะนึกว่าหมัดเบาหรือเปล่าแต่เขาบอกน็อกคู่ต่อสู้มาแล้วนักต่อนักฉะนั้นขอเสียงต้อนรับครับนางฟ้าขาโหดแองเจล่าช่างแองเจล่าช่างนางฟ้าขาโหดประเทศสหรัฐอเมริกาตอนรับนางฟ้าขาโหดครับแองเจลนาชาขึ้นสู่เวทีครับนะครับดูจากการชกลมเมื่อสักครู่นี้นะฮะวางไว้คล่องแคล่วทีเดียวนะครับดังนั้นต้องเจอคนคนนี้เลยนะฮะนี่คือขาประจําของไทยไฟไปแล้วนะครับตอนนี้เธอกลายเป็นซูเปอร์สตาร์ไปแล้วมีแฟนคลับไปทั่วเลยทั่วประเทศเลยนะฮะทั้งไทยและต่างประเทศด้วยใช่ฮะเพราะเธอคนนี้คือสาวแกล่งจากลุ่มสาดวินเวโรวอรุสิระวอขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆครับวอรุจิระบุสาวแกร่งลุ่มสารวิทประเทศเมียนมา
And there you can see Angela Chang, 30 years of age, originally from New York in the US of A, 160 centimeters tall with a professional record of 38 fights, 25 victories, 10 losses, and three draws. She's currently ranked number four in the world by the World Muay Thai Organization, but that is at 50 kilograms. This fight will be taking place at 53 kgs. The one and only female fight here this evening on Thai Fight. And there you see her opponent in the black corner, the Kian fighter, Vero Vo Rujiratwong. 15 years of age, 164 centimeters tall from Mobai, Shan State in Myanmar. She has a total of 32 fights, 13 victories, 2 losses, and 17 draws. Of course, she is a bronze medalist in the 2015 C Games, or the Southeast Asian Games. There, of course, with a very good record back in Myanmar, fighting in Lethwe. Like to assume that she ran out of opponents there, and that's why she's here in Thailand now. I think that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. In the white corner, Angela Chang from America. And in the black corner, Vero Vo Rujirawong representing Myanmar. Of course, we've seen Vero fight here a couple of times. I believe three fights now. All victories. Yep. Two by knockout. It was her debut, her only fight that she didn't get a knockout. I believe her last two fights ended within the first 30 seconds. Yeah, she uh, she had a couple of fights, didn't she, didn't she against uh, Dan Kong Fa on, uh, is it Moi Hardcore or Super Champ? That's right, um, it was Moi Hardcore. And already starting with a bang, the fighter in the black corner from Myanmar, Vero. Angela Chang keeping oh. her guard up yeah. on the defensive. Looks like there's an issue with the right eye of Angela Chang already. Early on into the fight. Beryl started very fast, very quick. Good overhand right there from Angela. That's what Beryl always does. She wants to start the fight early, bringing that left way style to the Muay Thai ring here. Absolutely beautiful start already from Vero, already showing her opponent, Angela Chang, what she is made of. You can see their size difference, definitely. Definitely there. Good body shot there from Vero. She's work, been working hard at Tiger Muay Thai. And of course, Angela Chang training out of PK Sunshine Muay Thai gyms, so both very big gyms. Very well-known gyms, of course. Good knees there from Vero, pushing Angela back, being the aggressor. Angela trying to weather this storm early on. Angela Chang now trying to be the aggressor, trying to push forward, but getting pushed, kicked back by Vero. Getting attacked once again. It's not easy being on the offensive against Vero, because Vero doesn't like to be on the defensive. There's no way. Good knees, though, there from Angela, holding her own in the clinch. Watch the jab, though, the left jab of Vero. She's setting up other things. There it is again. I think it's fair to say there that again. Angela Chang has already lasted longer than Vero's last two co opponents combined. Angela looking for that left hook. Good uppercut there from the fighter from Myanmar. She's definitely been working on a boxing. You, oh, you definitely. can see that, can't you? There it is, that left jab again. Looking and diving. Good left kick to the body also. Putting lots of things together and lots of different level changes by Vero. Oh, solid right shot to the body that time. It was a three-piece combination she threw also. But those hooks coming in from Vero look so dangerous and Angela Chang doing a good job of staying on her feet. Wow, incredibly quick. Chang survives though. End of round one. Perfection. Excellence of execution, I think they say. Vero, stunning, great work. Amazing boxing skills. Coming from all sides to attack Angela Chang. But fair play to Angela. You just see that right eye there, Kevin, just closing a little bit. Absolutely. Definitely caused by one of the hooks that, or one of the many hooks that Vera has thrown that first round. And it makes sense when you've got hands that are just covered in rope. It's not just her hands, it's her movement. She goes from high to low. It's incredible. Not only is she very sound offensively, but Vero also very and like defensively she, sound as well. Does she use that left hand just to pour, pour her opponent away and then she sets up something. Almost seems like it agitates Vero that Angela Chang is still on her feet. Angela Chang 
Good right that hand and a left kick there from Angela. Showing that she's no pushover, taking the fight to Vero in the second round. And looking for knees, trying to make this fight more dirty and frustrate that Vero. Was, that was quite interesting. Angela Chang went in initiated the clinch and Vero wanted no part of it. Maybe that's what Angela Chang needs to do. Yeah, you can see Vero's trying to part, like I said, with that left jab because she doesn't want that clinch. Angela, if she does want to get close though, you do risk getting caught with something and with Vero, it could be something big. Oh, and you see it. Vera could throw from short distance, from long distance. She could throw from anywhere, and you see her throwing some vicious elbows as well. That was what I mean. Angela just caught there with that left, that left hook, but she's in the clinch and she's throwing good knees to the body of Vero. Smart tactical play here from PK Sanchai. I believe that's exactly what Vero needs to nice do. Nice right shot. The clinch. Good body shot there. Oh, overhand left though from Vero. Better say it's a much better round from Angela Chang so far. Good low kick there from Angela. Angela just keeps on walking and something Vera's not used to. Her opponent's trying to walk her down. Very good block there from Angela Chang and it seems like Vera has slowed down a little bit she now. Has. I was just about to say the same, yes. Yeah, she came out of the traps in the first round. Very quick, maybe she's gassed a little bit. It's definitely a very different fight when Vera doesn't have that power. And she's starting to swing and miss things that she wasn't doing in the first round. And here comes Angela. Good body kick there from Vero. But again, here we go in the clinch. Into the clinch once again. And, I, and from what I've seen, Angela Chang has the upper hand in the clinch. Very exciting fight now. End of round two. Well, a very interesting round indeed. The first round was clearly Vero showing off for everything that she's been learning at Tiger Muay Thai. But I've got to say that second round, Angela, I think she grinded out that round. I think she moved into the clinch. She did take a few shots from Vero, but she slowed Vero down. And Vero wasn't half as, as forceful as we saw in that opening round. And Angela did actually connect with a few good knee strikes. Maybe she took the round. We certainly think so, don't we? It could be honest. the case. It could be the case. Of course, in our official scorecard, Angela Chang might have got that second round. Just very interesting to see how Angela Chang slowly figured out Vera's offense. But of course, here in the third round, after a long break, maybe Vera will come out swinging. Well, and according to the unofficial Kevin and Aaron scorecard, it's one all, so win the round, win the fight. Yeah, it's very important now, this round, this third round here. And let's not forget, here in Thai Fight, there are no draws. Good right hand there from Angela. Good solid right kick to the body though from Vero. Maybe she took the second round off so she could explode out the traps in the third because that's exactly what we're seeing right now, Kevin. Oh, absolutely. I've got to say, Angela, Lee's doing the, Angela Chang excuse me, doing a very good job in the, on the defense there. I don't think I've seen Vero's offense not connecting as well as it usually does. Yeah, good solid strikes again there from Vero, and she was level changing like she was doing in the first round. Vero backing off. She doesn't want any part of that clinch, does she? No, absolutely not. And just doing a very good job in that clinch. And I gotta say, no matter what the outcome of this fight is, we want to see a rematch either way. Angela, the only fighter, I believe, a tie fight who has managed to walk down Vero. And maybe take a round. Oh, absolutely. Oh! Spinning technique just missing there from Vero. Angela Chang saw that coming. Good body strikes again, though, from Vero. I really like the way she punches to the body. You don't often see that in Muay Thai. It's very rare. Absolutely. I mean, Underutilized technique, a beautiful spinning back elbow, a back fist there. Did that connect flush? It was difficult to see from that angle. And taking the back of Vero. He's trying it once more. Good elbow there from Vero, but here comes Sha Angela once again. Maybe she's just run out of steam this time. Let's see, I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but on the left side of Angela Chang's body, <laughs> very red indeed. There's that spinning, spinning back fist once again. A right smile there from Angela as the third and final round is over. We will take it to the judges. A great fight. These females. They equipped themselves well, showcased some great skills and all the facets of Muay Thai, including that clinch. We'll see what the judges say.
Oh, st sorry, stay with us here at Tie Fight. จบภาพช้าหลายๆคนรอลุ้นผลกันแล้วว่าคู่นี้นะมวยหญิงใครจะเป็นฝ่ายชนะครับและ,และมีการอัดฉีดเงินดังวันด้วยนะครับ 15,000 บาทจะเป็นของใครผู้ที่ได้ไปคือผู้ชนะครับผู้ชนะ The b i n n e r i s เวราวรุจิระวง from m i n a r y Yeah, t h e c o n g r a t u l a t i o n s t e r o r who r e a o u here at Thai Fight. Still undefeated. อาวุธยาวเอาละครับกลับมาที่ผมนะครับบนเวทีนะครับพร้อมลุยกันที่คู่ต่อไปครับคู่ต่อไปพบกันที่พิกัดน้ำหนัก72กิโลกร,รัมรุ่นนี้ต้องรุ่นใหญ่ครับเป็นคู่ของไซโยขุนศอกอัมหิตนั่นเองซึ่งเขาบอกว่าหาคนที่มาต่อก่อนเขายากมากเลยไม่มีใครกล้ามาเลยจนคนนี้ครับถูกบังคับมาไม่ใช่ถูกบังคับมาที่ไหนยืดอกรับแล้วเดี๋ยวเจอกันถ้ากล้าขนาดนี้นะฮะเดี๋ยวไปเจอเขาหน่อยดีกว่าเป็นนักมวยแถวหน้าจากอุซเบเลยนะฮะนอกคู่ต่อสู้มานักต่อนักสไตล์การออกมาในรัวเหมือนปืนกลขอเสียงต้อนรับ The m a c h i n กันอูเซียอิสโอิวยนเดอะแมชชีนกันครับดูว่าหมัดเขาจะรัวขนาดไหนมาเจอไซโยงนะครับคือสุสมเวียนเรียบร้อยแล้วนะครับสำหรับนักชกไทยนะครับในวันนี้ที่จะขึ้นชกนะครับคนนี้นี่นะฮะเป็นตำนานมวยศอกแห่งยุคสร้างความโหดเหี้ยมไว้มากมายตราตึงใจของทุกคนจริงๆขนาดคนไม่กล้ามาต่อกรขนาดนั้นครับผมมาลุยกันเลยนะครับวันนี้จะทําได้ดีขนาดไหนเป็นกําลังใจให้ด้วยครับกับขุนศอกอัมพิตสโยกุมพัดบวงสโยกุมพัดบวงขุนศอกอามาหิประเทศไทย
in the white corner, who's there, is Mojanov, otherwise known as the Machine Gun. 22 years of age from Uzbekistan, 178 centimeters tall. Professional record of 44 fights, 31 victories with 12 losses and one draw. Well apt in MMA, I believe, and also boxing. But also has a pretty decent record in Muay Thai also. Not bad for a 22-year-old, Kevin. Absolutely not. But he's going to add on to that experience that he's gaining very rapidly, I would say. Because here's his opponent in the black corner. Sayok Pumpamua. His real name is Sakta Niamhom. 38 years of age, 173 centimeters tall from Pisanaluk province. With a total of 328 fights, 277 victories, 49 losses, and two draws. Of course, Sayok comes here with a list of honors in his career. WMC Super Lightweight Champion, Rajana Nun Super Lightweight Champion, Thailand Welterweight Champion, Lumpini Stadium Super Welterweight Champion, Thai Fight Champion, of course, as well. This is Cup Super Fight Champion. And the list goes on. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't name them all. But name some of the very key ones, of course. And we have to we have to also bring up, not that we want to, his last win here at tie fight against the jordan watson which was unbelievable it's fair to say that destructive so you'll turn back the clock in that fight you did it was absolutely amazing to see and he's at his lowest we've seen him in weight for a long time he was 72.5 kg now he's at 72. he's back in 2014. Snapping, oh, oh my, my word snapping jabs there from the machine gun but all of a sudden a bazooka came out of nowhere and knocked down who's there Warning shot, it might be. If you blinked, you've missed it. My goodness, Sayok is on a roll. Back on form again. You can see he's going for those jabs again. Sayok staying very oh. calm and composed. Good left high kick. Dexterity shown there from Uzbeki. But here comes this Sayok there looking for his famous and famed left elbow. It's fair to say that Sayok did not take too kindly to that spinning technique by Uzier. It's Mojanov. Superman strike there attempted. Spanning, spinning back kick one more time. It finds a target that time. Absolutely, and maybe Sayo would have felt that one. Is Mojanov still on the back foot though, and Sayo There's trying that to make it pay for it. Again. That's right. That's where you don't want to be. Not against Sayo, no way. Try and stay as far away as you can. Strike from distance. You could ask any of Sayok's opponents. The last place you want to be is at the end of an elbow on Sayok. And he tends to do that once you're stuck on the ropes. Yep. And he doesn't mind taking a shot or two to get close towards you. And there he's throwing those left elbows again. Who's there coming up and throwing Sayok away. Not a bad tactic, to be honest. Very defensively sound there from Uzir, though. Very impressive that he's managed to defend those big elbows coming in from Sayok and managed to push the legend away as well. Sayok on the warpath. Is Mojinov still on the back foot? Still content with defending the shots coming in from Sayok. But he takes a little bit too many there. Oh. Has to go down for the second time in this first round. Remember in tie fight, three knockdowns and you win the fight. That's two already. And it's fair to say though, is Mojinov, he's done a very good job until he's received those knockdowns. Just the pure power and velocity that Sayok possesses. There he's going in with that right hand again. Clinching up now was Mojinov and good timing in that clinch as well. Looks like he was in a little bit of trouble, the young man from Uzbekistan. Just trying to box his way out of trouble here. Good knee there from Sayok and a left elbow. Sayok sprinting over, oh, and a right hand as he was jumping in and another left right. Sayok couldn't have timed that any better. And, and it's all over. Three both. knockdowns in a round. Exactly. And the referee has to call it the rules of tie fight. Because Mojinov looks pretty surprised about that, but he's been told before the fight. That's how it works out here in tie fight. But once again, a very impressive performance there from Sayo Pupamuang. Turning back the clock, just as we said. In 2014, he was the tight fight 72.5 kilo champion, and now he's weighing just 72 kilos. 
We're heading down to 70. They're looking better <laughs> than ever. Let's take a look at the handiwork from Sayok. Even though Uzair was trying to duck and weave and bob out of the situation, Sayok was able to find him. It was that right hook that did it. And then he just moved in for the kill. That right hook once again, extremely deadly from the Southpaw fighter. Oh. Homing missile, he knows exactly where his opponent's gonna be, and boy, does he strike quick and strike hard. Absolutely, let's take a look at that. Shot once again is that elbow, very famously done by Sayok. I think it's fair to say those who've been watching Tai oh. over the years know how deadly those elbows are, and now we've seen his hooks, how deadly they can be as well. Ah, left and right elbows. Just when you think you're safe, all of a sudden, well, it was the left elbow and the hook coming in there, straight to the jaw. And he's there at nowhere to go, but down. And there he jumps in for the flying knee. He got clipped with that right hand. What timing again by the 38-year-old Sayok. I think it's fair to say whoever Sayok's next opponent is, you better watch out for that right hook. Seems like he's peaking. <laughs> That's without a shadow of a doubt. Sayok looking better than ever. Looking forward to see what he does next here on Thai Fight. Let's go. Confirmation of the win from our MCs. Hey. ลุยนคู่ก็ต่อไปดีกว่านะครับพิกัดน้ําหนักเจ็ดสิบห้ากิโลกรัมคนแรกยอดมวยจากอิหร่านผ่านสังเวียนมวยไทยมันนับไม่
แดนนครระยองขุนศอกทะลวงฝันประเทศไทยI say I like the colours of the Moncon DX. <laughs> In the white corner, Mikhail Amiri from Iran, 22 years of age, 180 centimetres tall, with a professional record of 32 fights, 23 victories, 9 losses, and 0 draws. Quite a few Iranians starring here tonight at Thai Fight. Now here, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Gitti, Sotong Man Nakhon Leong. His real name is Dinapop Sai Chun, 22 years of age, 182 centimeters tall, representing Jantaburi province in the eastern part of Thailand. He has a total of 97 fights, 86 victories, 11 losses, and zero draws. Of course, he's a four-man tournament winner in Padia. 2019 Thai Fight Kachuk champion, and of course, a 2020 Thai Fight Kachuk champion as well. Going up in weight, 75 kilograms, lost previously, what, 70, 72, he's going up, growing up, 22 now. Both fighters in the ring, 22 years of age, makes me feel even older. <laughs> <laughs> Big crowd here at Nakhon Sawan. You know People not only sitting in the ring, ringside area, but also around, not an empty seat in sight. Of course, it has to be said though, we um, we often remember Sanchai's undefeated streak going all the way up to 60 fights. Now, I'm not sure how many fights Kitty has won in a row, but it must be a massive amount. True, very true. I have to go back and look. Even before signing for Thai Fight, of course, Thai Fight seen his talent, made sure he's on the show, and he's done a fantastic job ever since. In the white corner from Iran, Mikhail Amiri. And in the black corner from Thailand, Gitti Sotoman Nakhon Rayong. <laughs> Gitti, of course, um, we've seen him throughout various three round circuits, let's put it that way. I don't believe I've seen him lose once. <laughs> says here on his record that he does have 11 losses. Mm. Has been taking the distance a couple of times here at Thai Fight. But yeah, like you said, hasn't lost and did win. Just was unable to knock his opponent out. Well, whenever he's lost, I haven't seen it. So it must be a long <laughs> yes. time back. Beautiful start there from Gitney early on. And of 
course, what we know about Gadi is that he likes to start extremely fast, just like he's doing right now. Yeah. Like, likes to take it to his opponent early on. Ruthless and reckless. Sometimes trains out of Venom Muay Thai as well, likes to train there alongside PTT. I believe he trains there most of the time, he actually. Does, yeah. Seems like both fighters just testing the waters early on, Mikhail Amiri and Gitti. Both fighters in tremendous shape. Oh, good one-two combination there coming in from Kitty. With that chin from Mikhail Amiri is solid. Another right kick there from Kitty going towards the body. Trying to take uh, Kitty down, but gets taken down himself. A little overcut there from Kitty. Of course, Kitty, a two-time Thai Fight Tournament champion, perhaps. He might add to his list at the end oh, of this year. Oh, my goodness. An elbow from hell. Absolutely amazing from Kitty. Out of absolutely nowhere. It seemed like Amiri could take any single shot that Kitty was throwing with that elbow. No way. You know, Thai refs are the best in the world, right? And they can see when something's happening. They usually jump down and catch the head. Even the referee was surprised by that one. I mean, you could get the flash to be the referee and he would not have caught that. It's true. <laughs> no way. But Kitty was going in with that right kick and then trying to follow it up with the right hand. But this time, Flash, right elbow, right on the button. Oh, we've and got down to see. went Am Amiri. We've got to see a replay yeah, of that. I'm waiting for the replay. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to see it one more time. So there you see Amiri taken care of. Our professional doctor is here in Taipei. Oh, goodness me. Oh, and then his head just. Of course, there was the hands in the face that really distracted Amiri. See the way he just grabbed the arm, did Kitty, moved it out the way, so it could then bang, smash the elbow. Just above the cheek, it was almost on the eye. That landing just seemed as hard as that elbow. Oh. My goodness. Oh. You are not getting up from that. No way. Instant lights out. And that's why you just can't sleep on Gitti. He will punish you for any wrong step you take. Sublime, but very, very destructive. Congratulations to Kitty once again here at Thai Fight. <laughs> ขอประกาศดังๆนะครับพูดชนะได้แก่กิตติสตอดอแดนเรียวเอ้ยเอาละครับ <laughs> มันจริงๆฮะสุดยอดฮะโอ้โหลุยกันทุกคู่ต่อไปนะครับคราวนี้มีการ
แล้วครับนักสู้จากฟินแลนด์นะครับดูว่าวันนี้การช็อกของเขาจะทำให้เราฟินขนาดไหนครับมาครับลุยกันต่อเลยครับนี่คือนักชกชาวไทยนะครับมีการต่อกัน1กิโลโอ้เสียเฟินเลยเสียเฟินเลยครับทีครับต่อกัน1กิโลนะครับน้ำหนัก75กิโลกรัมนะครับนี่เขาคือ1ในโคตรมวยแห่งยุคตอนนี้เลยทำแบ็กมาเมื่อไฟที่แล้วเจ๋งมากมันมากกับเทพบุตรซาตานสุดสาคนสองกินเมสาโคนสอจินมีเทพบุตรซาตานประเทศไทยโอ้ครับไม่กล้าบอกตัวไม่กล้าบอกตัวไม่กล้าบอกตัวตัวต้องอารมณ์ตีนต้องหลบตีนต้องหลบตีนหัวใจมันช้ำแต่บอกตัวไม่ได้แอบรักคนรอดแอบคนรอดแอบคนรอดแต่พวกเธอมีดอกเธอมีดอกเธอมีดอกเลยไม่ขอรักใครเลยรักผู้ว่าคนดีชูละก็ไม่ได้ไล่ใจแต่พวกใครใส่มันล่อว่าพวกฉันอยากบอกให้รู้ไม่ได้เจ้าชูในสันดานแต่พวกชาวบ้านมันน่ากินสุดสุดคอนสตูก็ได้ Welcome back to Thai Fight, folks. In the white corner from Finland, Ari Savalainen, 35 years of age, from Finland, 183 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 39 fights, 24 victories, with 13 losses and two draws. Been around the Muay Thai scene for a long time. Would it be uh, fair to say, Kevin? Yeah, we've seen him fight in a couple of places, including uh, Lumpini Stadium quite recently, actually. So nice to see Ari Pekka Sovlanen here on Thai Fight. Don't get to see many fighters from Finland competing at Thai Fight, so it's a nice change. There's his opponent fighting out of the black corner, coming from the legendary Glyn Mee family, Sutsakorn Sokin Mee. His real name is Somkin Mi, 35 years of age, 182 centimeters tall, from Pattaya City, Chumri Province, Thailand. Has a total of 319 fights, 274 victories, 42 losses, and three draws. He's the 2013, or the first ever, Thai Fight Kachuk champion, after a win against Sayok Pumpumwong. And uh, 2007, uh, the Fairtex Tepersit champion. So a while back, before he made his name for himself, yeah, recently uh, re-signed with Thai Fight. Performed very well in his uh, first outing back. Let's see what he's got here tonight. Oh, definitely. And it was a much more serious Sutsakun than the last bout we saw him. I think we might see more of the same here. Beautiful oh. low kicks there thrown from Sutsakun after a beautiful combination. Well, on our last bout, we saw two 22-year-olds going at it. This time, two 35-year-olds. Could be more fair oh. than that. <laughs> Sneaky low kick there from Sutsukon. It looked like he was going to pull the trigger on a right hand and he went low. There it is again. Sutsukon loves to fight like that. He loves to put the hand combinations together and finish off with a low kick. There's that low kick again. 
any fighter doesn't block the low kicks from Suzakorn, he will make them, he will punish them without a shadow of a doubt. We've seen it on countless occasions. Good left hand there, and a the right hand coming in from Suzakorn, and again, Another timing it to perfection. Beautiful hook there thrown from Suzakorn. He must have been watching Sayok's fight early on today. <laughs> Maybe. Still pushing forward, Suzakorn. Looking for that one, too. We saw um, his brother Sinsamut earlier here today, so we know he's around ring ringside somewhere. Oh, definitely. And, and of course, another product of the Lindby family. And of course, you've got to include um, Rambas from Dead, MC Polk there as well. Some very popular fighters within that one family. Beautiful combinations put together there from Sinsakorn. Are we doing a good job staying on his feet and tries to attack back, but receives another big right hand from oh. Sinsakorn, socking me. Solid right hands there from Sinsakorn, and then combines it with a low kick. Now Ari just not hitting back. Really needs to do something if he wants to get something out of this round here. I like that from Sinsakorn, going low, switching levels. Looking for an elbow. Sinsakorn looking like he's having a lot more fun in the ring right now. There's that right hand again. He's done so well to connect with his hands. I'm just impressed by how well his boxing has improved. And it's maybe fair to say he's had Ekapop as a trainer now. Ekapop saw me once upon a time. I think the doctor's going to have to take a look at the nose of uh, Sabalainen right now. It doesn't look that bad, but... Should be able to continue, but we're not the doctors. Unless we can get a camera, there we go. Doctor yeah. says okay. It's okay. <laughs> I've got to agree with him with my very little experience of being a doctor. <laughs> Zero is the answer. Oh, there's a slight cut on the top of the head now. Just where the doctors just checked. Yeah, good body shot again there from Sutsu Khan. Yeah, big body shots. And I believe Sutsu Khan will start going to the body now that, now that he's seen how Ari has reacted to it. Nice sweep there from Sutsukorn, and it could be really demoralizing to get up from those sweeps. And the front one. Oh, hobbling back to the corner. Bloody and beaten. We'll see you in round two. Let's take a look at some of the replays from the first round. Sutsukorn connecting very well with a lot of hands and a lot of good combinations. Of course, going for some of the, some fantastic low kicks as well. Ari just avoiding that elbow, but not that one. Ari, of course, in the very first round, cut in two different places from what I've seen. That must be the second cut. Here's that fantastic sweep that we saw towards the end of that first round. Quite impressive um, from Savalainen to be able to stay on his feet and not get knocked down with the amount of punishment he took in oh, that first round. Absolutely, I think it's fair to say that Sutsa Khan took that first round without doubt. Of course, unofficially. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can write that one down, that's okay. <laughs> absolutely. Inside kick now to that damaged leg of Savalainen. Nice right hand there from Savalainen, actually connected, but Sutsa Khan did not like that oh, one bit. He's, and he's hobbling on that left leg, Kevin. Sutsa Khan's just gonna go for it. He's just taking far too many low kicks, and if you don't block those low kicks, Sutsa Khan is gonna make you pay. He's going to continue punishing it, and why yep. not? The, the referee, referee yep, yeah, have, the having ref a good look. Oh. <laughs> it was only in due time. I think that's it, yep. And that's a KO victory in the second round for Sutsukon. Very impressive Sock again. And me, yeah. Once, once more by Sutsukon. As I said, it's a very different Sutsukon from what we used to see before. His combinations are connecting, he's putting his hands together well, and those low kicks. The success rate on those are amazing. But I think what you stated in the first round about the improvement in his boxing was what was able for him to throw those leg kicks at will. And then ultimately, that did the damage. But Absolutely. very impressive again, once again. By the returning, the legend, Sutsa Khan Sarkin Me. Let's see a, a little bit of that handiwork. Or should I say leggy work in that second and final round. I mean, when he was going back to the corner in the first round, we could see that he was on one leg. And as they say, it's difficult to win on one leg. You've got to say, very well done for Chutsa Gorn for understanding that he's taking up punishment. He doesn't need it anymore. And what better way to align him for just dropping to the floor as well and realizing that's enough to know. Absolutely. It was only a matter of time. 
Those low kicks are absolutely lethal. And you won't be able to see it on the camera, but he is hobbling backstage right now with the help from uh, a couple of the doctors. Interesting, isn't it? Sayok looking amazing, and now Sutsukorn as well, rolling back the clock. They both definitely did. Maybe we can see a rematch, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, 10 years in the making, yeah? <laughs> Absolutely. Happy as ever, Sutsukorn. The Rai smile after another knockout victory here at Thai Fight. Good to come back. So, the result of this fight in this round, you can see the result of this fight. 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 เป็นกระจายกับผู้ที่พ่ายไปด้วยนะฮะใช่ครับเดี๋ยวกลับมาลุยกันใหม่ได้นะครับตอนนี้อีก 3 คู่ที่เหลือมัดแน่นอนนะครับเดินมาด้วยความมั่นใจและกําลังจะก้าวเข้าสู่สังเวียนนี่คือดาวรุ่งดวงใหม่มุชทาบาทาเลบิสมาธิมั่นคงแน่วแน่มากนะครับตอน
Well, wings made of fire, but fists full of dynamite. We now come to the part of the evening where it's Thailand versus Iran. Three fights left. That is correct. And all the Thai fighters will be fighting fighters from, of course, you guessed it, Iran. And there you can see the first Iranian fighter of the, no, the second, should I say. But in this part, Mojtaba Talebi, 19 years of age, wow. 180 centimeters tall with a professional record of 33 fights, 24 victories with nine losses and zero draws. Now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Fototor, or Lujibawang, or PTT, Bobojibawang. His real name is Wan Chalum, Bang Dan Bang. 24 years of age, 178 centimeters tall, from Padia City in Chungri Province, Thailand. He has a total of 159 fights, 129 victories, 29 losses, and one draw. Of course, some of the honors in Fodotar's career, or PTT's career. <laughs> Either will do. <laughs> exactly. Isuzu Cup champion, the 26th Isuzu Cup champion, in fact. The Isuzu Cup super fight champion. The Thai fight champion in 2016, with gloves, of course. The Thai fight cut shirt champion in 2017. And he's achieved a lot here already in his young career. Mm. Only 24 years of age. Trains out of Venom Muay Thai gym in Pattaya. Has a great relationship with Nabil. I always yes, see them playing on TikTok, having fun in there. And of course, we've seen him, Nabil, in his corner in the Thai fight in Batum Tani, in fact. That's correct. I mean, Nabil, what a tower. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you couldn't miss him out. Maybe a future Thai fight star? Who knows? <laughs> All right, boys and girls. Mojtabi Talebi from Iran in the white corner. In the black corner, PTT Bob Richard Wong. Trying to think back to, to think if there's ever been anyone as young as uh, Talibi, 19. 19 years of age here in the Thai fight stage. I wonder if the nerves might get to him. Maybe PTT's new flame? A very big supporter, <laughs> that's for sure. Without a shadow of a doubt, PTT gets things started early on with some beautiful hands on his Iranian opponent. Gosh, Tavi there, standing tall. They yeah, didn't seem to have a problem with that whatsoever, but the big right hands now coming in from PTT once again and a nice low kick. Right high, sorry, left high kick attempted there from Talebi. Oh, and it's down. Guess, things seemed like it was going all right for Talebi. And it's all over. Another quick knockout victory for PTT by Wurzirat Wong. And Talebi is sat in the corner. He's riding in pain right now. A lot of pain. As is the effect PTT has on his opponents. PTT definitely not a stranger to finishing the fights early. And we saw exactly what he's capable of right there. Well, short but sweet. PTT does it once again here at Thai Fight. And a new haircut to go with another knockout. I think he spends more time at the barbers than he does actually in the ring. You know what? I, I, I have <laughs> the same feeling as that. It didn't even look like he connected 100% on that shot. But there's enough power in there to knock a man down. Oh, well, from that camera angle. It definitely connected yes, 110%. It and you can just ask to leave, but he's in a lot of pain right now. Props to Venom Muay Thai and um, Medi Zatout and Coach Diamond doing a great job on PTTs. He's looked amazing since he came to Thai Fight, but even more so now, Chris Boxing. Yeah, definitely not making the same mistakes as he used to do back in the past. A lot more cautious on his defense as well. And as you can see right there, still offensively sound. Take it to our MCs for confirmation of the victory. Yes! 
สแสดงความยินดีด้วยครับนะฮะโอ้โหนะฮะนี่แหละฮะคู่อีก2คู่ต่อไปครับจะด็อกหรือเปล่าติดตามสักคู่เดียวผ่านราชาแห่งการน็อกเอาไปเรียบร้อยแล้วนะครับสำหรับคู่ต่อไปรับรองทุกคนต้องติดตามให้ดีเพราะหลายๆคนอาจจะไม่เคยเห็นนี่คือโคตรมวยแห่งสยามครับที่หลายๆคนนะฮะอาจจะไม่เคยดูมาก่อนแต่นี่คือลีลาพลิ้วไหวนะฮะบนสังเวียนแห่งนี้รับรองว่ามันแน่นอนแต่ว่าเป็นมันจะซักเท่าไหร่เพราะความสูงของคู่ต่อสู้นะอาจจะเท่าไหร่จริงความสูงต่างกันประมาณ12เซนติเมตรแต่ว่าโคตรมวยของเรานะฮะมีท่าไม้ตายอยู่เป็นท่าหมาดีดกะโหลกดูซิว่าวันนี้จะได้เห็นกันหรือเปล่านะฮะกับความต่างของส่วนสูงนะรับรองว่าสนุกแน่นอนและคู่ต่อสู้ของเขานะครับบอกเลยว่าการชกดุดันมากๆขอเสียงต้อนรับจิ้งจอกแห่งเมืองคาราชอาลีโกราติสรัสคานอาลีโกราติสรัสคานจิ้งจอกแห่งเมืองคาราชประเทศอิหร่านกูต่อสู้มาแล้วนะครับขึ้นสู่สังเวียนแล้วครับผมนี่ครับคุณเดียวครับผมไม่ต้องพูดพร่ำทำเพลงอะไรแล้วนะฮะคุณเป๊กเกินไปเป็นที่เรียบร้อยแล้วโคตรมวยแห่งสยามสุดปังคนนี้ขอเชิญรับมือต้อนรับโคตรมวยแห่งสยามแสนชัยพีเกแสนชัยมวยไทยเกมใช่มาแล้วเ
All right, folks, if you've just joined us, this is not the last fight of the evening. We know Sanchai does like to headline these events, but not this time. Peng Nung will be coming out later because he is a Nakansa One native. But as you can see right there, Sanchai's opponent, Ali Gutratsi Sariskan. Did I say that right? Been practicing all day. 25 years of age from Iran, 175 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 51 fights, 30 wins, one coming here at Thai Fight, 19 losses, and two draws. Definitely a very big task for the Iranian native because he's taking it on Sanchai, PK Sanchai Moisai Jim. Real name is Super Chai Sanpong. 48. One years of age, 163 centimeters tall, from Mahasarakam province in the northeastern part of Thailand. Has a total of 335 fights, 324 victories, 29 losses, and two draws. And the list of honors that Sanchai has got just goes on and <laughs> on and on and on. <laughs> Tell the people at home what they want to hear. One of the few people to, one of the few fighters to win the sports right association of Thailand Fund of the Year award. Sanchai, he's won it twice. Uh, the Lupini champion in four different weight divisions. And he's won the Kachuk title for Thai Fight in 2016. And he's won the Thai Fight belt to a Thai Fight tournament three years in a row. Of course, not many other fighters have won the Sports Riders Association of Thailand Fight of the Year award twice. Han Payak being the only fighter who's won it more than once, and he's been on Thai Fight. The 4 2. Yep, lost on Thai Fight as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then you have um, Underwan Gao Samrit. I believe won it on 2000, in 2003 and 2004. And the other one being Gan Sok Sok Lunjit. Back in the 80s, what a fighter he was. Now a trainer in the United States of America. I'd be interested to know if I know Sanchai won the award, I think it was in 99. And then around 2007. I believe he's the only fighter who's not won it consecutively. Okay, so I was about to say two uh, different centuries. That's, that, is, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is, is there correct. anyone else who's done that? Plus the, 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 the amount of years, the gap difference, I don't think anyone can compete with that either. No. It shows I, how, how, how amazing he's been throughout all these years. He should have won it more, more than two times, in my opinion, but there you go. Okay, there you go, yep. Still going strong at 41 years of age. But I did mention briefly that Ali has actually won here at Thai Fight. Oh, yes. And in his last fight against Suksawat, I think he knocked down Suksawat maybe two times, it was? Once in the first round. <laughs> agree, ad agree or disagree? I, I was there as a spectator, so <laughs> saw everything. <laughs> it looked like twice to me. I'll have Absolutely. To roll that tape back. Let's have a look. All right, folks. Penultimate fight of the evening in the lost. white corner from Iran, Ali Gutratsi Sariskan. And of course in the black corner, Sanchai PK Sanchai Muay Thai Jim. Yeah, we saw Ali Gutratsi Sariskan, one win by KO in Thai Fight Lampang. I believe it was in the second round. Very, very mm. good with his hands. Amazing very, very performance, good. yeah. But this time, glove, not card check. Will that play a difference? Let's find out. Oh, right high kick straight away there. One is shot to Sanchai. Huge kick to start the things off for the Iranian fighter. Headhunting. There from Sanchai. Still quick on his feet, as you can see, after all these years. He's been to so many wars, Sanchai. And about to go through an, a, a, another one. Can't remember how many fights he's won in a row now, but all I know is that it's definitely over 60. Can Ali? Good Rati Saraskan be the first one to stop that. Well, so far, so good. Oh, beautiful right hand there. From, sorry, left hand from Sanchai. Sanchai may take some of his opponent's offense quite early on, but I don't think it takes him long at all to figure his opponent out. We see it on countless occasions. Just missing on the low kick there. Sanchai with really fast feet, but his opponent there managed to stay on his feet. Still, we're trying to walk down Sanchai. Yeah, beautiful right body shot there from the Iranian. Yeah, but Rati Saraskan is doing a very good job of just walking forward, not giving Sanchai any space. Receiving a left hook there, though. Trading kicks. Good body shot there. Nice 
left hand from Sunshine going for the axe kick. Going right to Cyrus Kai just getting out of the way. And a very nice left hand there from Sanchai, who's definitely feeling the groove right now. Straight into the clinch they go. So Ali attempt that right high kick a few times now. He's not been far away. No, not at all. I mean, he's done a good job of holding his own in the, in the first round. Beautiful inside kick there from Ali. So we're going to miss there from Sanchai. Another miss there from Gojwati Saraskan. Sanchai looking for that body shot. Ali trying to go in with an elbow within the clinch. Doing a very good job, Ali. Oh, solid right knee there from Sanchai. I can take the wing out your sails. <laughs> Absolutely. But of course, nothing Sanchai's never felt before. He's taking his opponent there after grabbing the leg kick. Nice low kick there. Very hard to pinpoint what Sanchai's strongest asset is in, in a fight. End of round one. I can see highlights of that first round. Barely even first round. Ali pretty much set the tone with that right high kick straight off the bat. And then I'm going back and forth. Not an easy round to judge it all. Good knee here though by Sanchai. That was definitely a fantastic first round for both fighters, but you just, you just can't be too surprised by how good Ali's doing right now. We've seen exactly. how he's done in the previous fights on exactly. Sci-Fi. Very talented fighter. But the mistake he's made against Tuxawa in his previous fight in Nam Lampang was to slow down yes. the second round, and surely he won't be making the same mistake. Well, you let's find out. And you can't do the same thing against Sanchai. We've seen it all, done it all. It'll definitely be an interesting round here. Oh, going there's that the, head kick again. Yeah, going for Very the kick quick. early on. Just missing though. Yeah. Go for the low kick and now Sanchai doing the walking while Ali comes in with a great kick to the midsection. Well done there from Ali. Swing and miss there from Ali, but good knees. Very busy fighter. Doesn't stop moving, doesn't stop working. Nice knee once again from Sanchai, who remains very composed despite the barrage of attacks coming in from Ali. Taking another shot, though. I think Sanchai sees. <laughs> he sees that left hand and then that left body. That oh, oh my goodness! Unbelievable from Sanchai. The timing of the 41-year-old is unbelievable. The that, Sanchai it, that could be that could be a broken rib. The Sanchai we saw in the first round is very different from the Sanchai we saw in the second round. No, he can't. He can't do it, it's all over. Oh my goodness. I'm not joking, Sanchai in that first round, you think, well, maybe Ali's actually got a chance. Yeah, maybe. And then he just turned on, he just turned it up in the second round and he found that combination out of nowhere. He discovered that left hand was available and he threw in a knee for good measure and it connected flush. And just, yeah, exactly, Ali got right to his has gone, might have had it, you know? I mean, we, we were thinking he may get the second round as well, but Sanchai, Turn it on in the second round. You know, and to be fair to Ali, in Muay Thai circles, I wouldn't be surprised if we hear his name again. Yes. Because he's been looking fantastic each time he's performed here at Thai Fight. He just got caught by a genius. That's all you can say. And let's not forget, he's only 25. Yep. Let's have a look. Oh, goodness. It doesn't get any better than that's that it. when it comes to knees. Oh, that might be the, the first time I've seen him actually throw that left hand, left knee technique. Absolutely incredible. Oh. Look, that timing covered, of that. Covered up perfectly, as you should. And then sneaky Sanchai. Timing that knee that's to just ultimate the, perfection. That's just the thing about Sanchai. He's got that element of surprise. Opponents just don't expect some of the things that oh, he's going to throw. That rattled the whole body. And I'm not sure it was the last time we've seen Sanchai knock somebody out with a knee like that, especially. Oh, my goodness. You can see the point of the knee left a little well which I assume will be a big well in the morning. I'll tell you what, no one is prepared for that. No way. Folks, don't stay anywhere, because still to come, we have the Nakon Sawan native, Deng Nung, will be here. <laughs>
ผู้ชนะได้แก่แสนชัยพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิน hey! ดีกับผู้ชนะนะครับแล้วเป็นกำลังใจกับผู้ที่แพ้ไปด้วยลีลาแบบนี้ความดุดันความมันแบบนี้อยู่ที่นี่กับไทยไฟเท่านั้นเลยได้เป็นการชกมวยคาดเชื่อมทางในหลายๆรุ่นด้วยใช่ครับอีกหนึ่งคู่สุดท้ายสุดท้ายนะเตรียมตัวให้ดีนะครับแต่งหนึ่งมาแน่นอนพักสักครู่เดียวครับลุยแล้วฮะคู่สุดท้ายนะครับเป็นนักมวยเจ้าถิ่นด้วยนะฮะแต่คู่ต่อสู้ที่จะมาเจอนะครับก็ไม่ธรรมดาคัดสรรมาอย่างดีใช้ความสดบวกกับความใหญ่ขยี้ไล่คู่ต่อสู้ขอเสียงต้อนรับพยักจากเปอร์เซียโมฮัมหมัดคาริมิชอบโมฮัมหมัดคาริมิชอบพยักจากเปอร์เซียประเทศอิหร่อนนะครับคู่สุดท้ายแล้วครับมาแล้วฮะบูทาเสียงของเรานะครับคุณสุวัสดีเรียบร้อยแล้วนะครับมาดูนักชกชาวไทยกันบ้างนะครับวันดีเป็นเจ้าทีมผมต้องขอเกลื่นนะฮะเพราะว่ายังไม่เคยเกลื่นตรงนี้ที่ไหนครับนะครับนักมวยผู้นี้นะครับได้รับการดูแลและการสนับสนุนโดยสุภาพสตรีที่เรารู้จักกันในนามของเจ๊สายรุ้งนะครับเวลาประกาศนักมวยท่านนี้ขึ้นมาก็จะได้ชื่อนี้อยู่ปล่อยๆเลยนะครับสุภาพสตรีท่านนี้นะครับเป็นหญิงแกร่งแห่งวงการมวยนครสวรรค์เลยเพราะในสังกัดเขามีแต่ยอดมวยทั้งนั้นยอดมวยคนนี้ที่จอกมานะครับเป็นแชมป์อิสุครับออนิวอิสุจุดีแม็กพลันุภาพไร้ขีดจำกัดนี่คือนักสู้แห่งเมืองปากน้ำโพมังกรปากน้ำโพแต่งหนึ่งสิเจสายรุ่งแย่แต่งหนึ่งสิเจสายรุ่งมังกรปากน้ำโพประเทศไทยThere you can see in the white corner, Mohammed Karim Shah, 22 years of age from Iran, 175 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 38 fights, 35 victories, with just three losses. Highly impressive. Well, that's standing in good stead. And there's this man. Now, let's take a look at the. Hometown fighter, the second 
fighter from the Khon Sawan here tonight. Deng Deng Sitche Sai Lung. His real name is Ekapan Sambun Sap. 29 years of age, 180 centimeters tall. And of course, as mentioned before, from right here in the Khon Sawan province. There's a total of 107 fights, 89 victories, 14 losses, and 4 draws. Of course, he was the Weber tournament champion back in Siam Omnoy. Not a while ago, of course. He was the King's Cup champion as well. He's the Cup Super Fight champion. Better say a multiple time Thai Fight champion as well. And gets the honor to headline this card in his hometown of Nakhon Sawan. Over Sanchai, how about that? What an honor it is. And why not, back in his hometown. Sure, he's got family and friends out there. Oh, absolutely. And um, <laughs> we were talking, weren't we, in the back? We were saying, with the history that Deng Nung's got with his knockout punches, is it worth coming all the way out here? You might as well just stay at home. <laughs> you know <what> I'm right. <laughs> well, let's see anyway if uh, Kareem Shah can make a fight out of this one. He's got a tremendous record 35 fights, sorry, 35 victories from 38 wins. Very impressive indeed. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for sticking around. This is the final bout of the evening. Mohammed Karim Shah from Iran in the white corner. And of course, Teng Nung suggests I rule in the black corner. As you can see on your screen, a two kilogram white advantage for Karim Shah. Teng Nung training out of Fairtex in Pattaya. Every time we see him now, it looks like he's getting in better and better shape. I was just about to say, just look, look at how he's built right here. <laughs> so we've uh, figured out pretty late that uh, this is his hometown. Mm. We saw him in the, in, in the car park with a lot of family members, I would assume. Yeah. I'm wondering, my goodness. <laughs> but even even on the card that we we got with all the information of the fighters, it didn't have Tang Nung as the uh, as the headliner. It was still Sanchai. So I wonder if that was a late decision. Oh, good footwork and then a right high kick coming in from Kar Kareem Shah trying to shock the crowd and quieten them. Yeah, Kareem Shah trying to look for the spectacular, going for a head kick right away. Tang Nung maybe giving oh. one back and some heavy shots they're fired from Kareem Shah. Oh, good hands coming in. Pushing Tang Nung back. What aggression by Mohamed Karimi Shah. Where did that come from? Tang Nung looking for an elbow. I don't think Tang Nung knows himself. Took that elbow very well, though. Karimi Shah is with. Oh, another good right hand coming in there from Karimi Shah. Huge combinations by Karimi Shah. What a start to the fight. The big elbow from Tang Nung, which Karimi Shah just smiles away. Outside fight kick there from Tang Nung. Outside body shot. He's looking for that left hand. Karimi Shah is connecting. Oh, absolutely. And Tengden knows it, and Tengden not trying to give him any space whatsoever. That's why Karimi Shah is in his own corner right now. And when he does get back to into the corner, he fights his way out. It doesn't just cover up. Going for that low kick, trying to go for a spinning oh, back elbow. But that one hurt him. And down, Karim Shah goes. Perhaps not the best of ideas. Uh, what Karimi Shah tried to do, that he tried to go for a spinning back elbow. But never turn your back on Tengden, because that's exactly what he'll do to you. Jesai Rook smells blood in the water. But another left kick to the bottom, another left hand there from Deng Nung. Level changes, kick for good measure. And down once again goes Karimi Shah. Remember, three knockdown rule. If you get knocked down three times in one round, the fight is over. So he's got to stay on his feet right now if he wants to continue. Absolutely love the way Karimi Shah started the fight, but maybe he's going to have to do a little bit more. Than that, he's not do. Oh! Girls. The Nakon Suwan native does it once again. Congratulations, Deng Nung Sit Dry Sarong. That's right, a KO victory in the first round for the whole hometown fighter. Maruni Shah, he started off well. He was pushing forward with lots of punches. And then Deng Nung, he just said, you, you. And it was time for that KO. Three knockdown rule implied, imposed. Don't think we needed a three <laughs> knockdown roll there because uh, Kirby Shark just got on his feet just now. But beautiful start to the fight by Mohamed Karimi Shark. Very impressive. I mean, it looked like Tegnan was in some danger there. There's that beautiful respect we see all the time in Muay Thai. Even Tegnan had a little cut over the top of his nose, which is a victory in itself. Oh, absolutely. That's the first knockdown 
I say from from a far distance, Karimi Shah looks like an Iranian An Antoine Pinto. <laughs> Just an observation. I hope Antoine's not listening, but there you go. My goodness, no comment for that. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. As soon as he found the range. And this is That's always gonna happen. The final knockdown or <laughs> the actual knock knockout of the fight. Beautiful hands from Tengden. That left hand is impossible to stop. Once it connects, there's very little his opponents can do. That beautiful offense there by Tengden early on. Oh. Once he started to connect with those low kicks, it seemed like that was a game changer. Yeah, it was a great neutralizer. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Proud on their feet. What a homecoming. Oh, absolutely. And of course, as announced earlier, the next high fight. Maybe in Sisaket. It is Sisaket. For sure? <laughs> okay. That's what they've, they've announced. OK, there you go. So Sisaket and... 20, for, June 26th. For when aware in Sisaket? Sorry? June 26th. June 26th, yep. Pencil it in. Set your calendars. Let's take a look at that knockout one last time. Huge oh. left hand there from Ding Ding to Jay Sai Rung. Time to perfection. He was even taking shots, weren't he, to get in? Yeah, he was. But as soon as that left hand was clocked, as soon as he found a passageway, right here, not here. <laughs> this one. Moved out the way, slight dip to the left. Bam. Straight through the guard. Got to give Karimi Sharg a lot of credit, though. He bought the fight to Tengdung, and that's more than we can say for a lot of uh, Tengdung's past opponents. Indeed. Let's take it over to our MCs for the final decision. And just like Kevin said, we'll see you on June 26th in Sisaket. Bye for now. ครับสําหรับหมวยเจ้าถิ่นอย่างเต็งหนึ่งหน่อยนะฮะก็ไม่ทําให้พวกเราผิดหวังนะครับผมเอาละครับฉะนั้นก็ประกาศนะฮะให